Hello, lovely CAWC members. Welcome to Quarantine Tuesday with uh, me, your host, Dahlia Bikers. And today I'm very excited to introduce you to Sharon from the Rebel Chef UK, who is going to give us a fantastic Christmas uh, presentation of Christmas cooking with the Thermomix, which happens to be my very favorite machine that I've ever bought in my entire life ever. I bought it in 2009, so 11 years ago, and it's still, I've got the old one. She's got the, the brand spanking new one, which is very exciting. But my one is 11 years old. It's the older model. It's two models before this one. And it still works today as good as it did the day I bought it. Um, so it's the best, best machine I've ever bought. Um, as a nutrition coach, I'm very, very interested in anything that can help us get interested in cooking, make cooking easier and more nutrition for nutritious for us to do as busy mums. Um, so I'm very excited about uh, learning some new things to make on the Thermomix and obviously ask lots of questions. Um, to Sharon or me and um, if, if you guys like this we can do like um, every second month or so we can do something different and exciting with the Thermomix machine. Um, so yes, yeah, so welcome Sharon, thank you for doing this for us today. Thank you Dania, what an amazing um, introduction, so thank you very much. I am uh, I'm actually and more newbie to the, the Thermomix than Dahlia. I've only had my machine a year. And um, I, I'm i Irish and um, we've never heard of this in Ireland. And, but I've got lots of, um, you know, Italians and, and, and Greeks and um, French and German, etc. cetera. Um, and first of all, what happened was some friends of mine who were Portuguese, I said, oh, I've just got and bought one of these. I've always wanted to buy one, and I've gone and bought it. And I was like, and uh, I was like, no, I, I, I think, I think, no, I don't need that. Um, and then my friend, who's Italian, um, bought it, and um, it wasn't what kind of got me interested was because I come to oh no, another gadget was it wasn't her, but it was her, her son and her husband who were talking about. She was telling me about how they'd gone mad and they were cooking with it all the time on it and how her son was sending recipes to the machine and la da la da and that annoys me nothing annoys me more than thinking a man can do better than me so I started to look at it and then when I looked at it I was just like oh golly well I have to have that so I'm just going to give you a very quick um uh we only want to do a very quick um uh just presentation and have fun etc and just to tell you um what it is and how it works, etc. So you can see what I'm doing and, and why I'm doing it. And on here, um, this this is a machine that comes with loads of gadgets. So it, it and it can do all sorts of things. It chops, it weighs, it steams. I'm going too fast, slow me down. And that's why it's got all these gadgets with it. So in here is a steamer, and I was getting it ready, and then I realised inside was where. I'd hidden the chocolates, because if I hadn't hidden them, they would have been absolutely demolished. So you can use this for steaming, so as it cooks, the steam comes up, or you can use it for hiding your sweets. Um, it's also got a, um, a steaming basket, and uh, you can use it for straining. But interestingly, the way that the rice, I don't know, Dania, if you do rice in this, but a fantastic way of doing the rice is you put the rice in here, you put it into the bowl and you kind of fill it so that the um, water's just over the rice and then you cook it. And what happens is, is the water is, is um, agitating around and it comes and it's cooking the rice at the same time and it comes out the most clean and just fluffy rice ever. So uh, that's, a, but it also has a rice function in it. The newer ones also have this, which is because the newer ones have got a, a sugar function, um, and obviously sugar is very dangerous and it spits. So that's um, just basically something. And also you can do jam and all sorts of things in it. So that's what the uh, jam. Uh, it do I don't have that nifty sugar thing. Yeah, because you can't go up as high as, as mine can. That's just a spatula. And the other thing that it's got is where have I put it? I've got I think it's a little, the jug. 
Karen? Yeah, the jug. There's the there's the whisk that you could do. Um, oh, mashed potatoes. Do you make mashed potatoes in yours? No, I've never tried. Oh, God, you've got to try it, okay? okay. You, you basically, what you do with this is you throw it in, you put in milk, you put in this, and it just, uh, honestly, it's the most fluffy mashed potatoes. So it's, um, that's the bowl, comes apart, goes in the dishwasher, um, and it also washes itself. Hooray! I love that part of it. Now, on here is um, the kind of cookery book, which is called Cookie Do. Okay, and I'm just going to show you um, kind of what it looks like. Okay, so it's going to come up. Okay, cool. So you could, that's the screen. I just want to show you a little bit. Uh, so let's get a bit further. So right. Sharon, what you're yeah? showing us on your iPad is the same as what you see on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, so if I turn down the lights, I there can, you go. I can join, I can, I can yeah? join Cookie Do. And, and then do it manually what you just tap into your machine because your machine. Yeah, because remember I was saying to you, you can subscribe to this for a month for free. Okay. So you could go through it and pull out all the recipes you like and, and, and just kind of keep a copy of them because once they go, they go. I mean, what happens with mine is, is it now puts those recipes into the machine and I've, I've already done that. So there's, there's 40,000 recipes in here. And what will happen is, and there's also cookery books. So you can see there's some cookery books. So it saves you buying cookery books. But what I've done is you can do menu planning with this. So I've already set up in the machine those recipes. And also it's got the ability to look at the recipe, which is what I'm going to cook, look at the ingredients, okay? And then what I can do is, create a shopping list from it and send that list to, to Waitrose or whoever. So it even does the shopping for you, which is amazing. So this does all the menu planning and all of that for you. So for me, what I've done here is I've got hot artichoke dip. If I click on my machine and I look at my week. So when I first got this home, I said to my boys, you do the cooking. And I'm going to click. So you can see all the, the, the things that I've pre- loaded and then there's the artichoke dip which matches that and now what this machine does is it's going to talk me through um the recipe and um so what it's saying to me here on the screen is turn on the oven and turn it up to 200 degrees so it's a guided cooking machine which is an irish person who can only cook potatoes it's amazing so I'm turning on my oven and I'm going to get it up to 200 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is it's asking me for 120 grams of cheddar. And we'll, we'll have the recipe ingredients and instructions for you afterwards. So, you know, if you want to ask any questions, etc. So it's, it's got in the machine, it's actually got the weighing scales. So it's gone to zero. Does yours have a weighing scales? Yep, yep. Man ways. Okay. Well, my family, in my family, the favorite things for us to to cook are a fantastic spaghetti bolognese, <laughs> uh, where I do um, half half of it of vegetables and half meat. So once it's all mixed up in the in, in the in the sauce and stuff, it, the kids don't even know that they're consuming fifty percent vegetables. Um, <laughs> So, which is fantastic. What they really love is when I make ice cream in the um, the ice cream thermo mix. So, um, I don't know if any of you have seen, but I often make detox pancakes, protein pancakes with only the egg whites. And I the egg yolks, and then the kids are very happy because then I make ice cream with the egg yolks in my thermo mix. So, yes, yeah, so Sharon, sorry. So, we, we put uh, how much? 150 grams of? Cheese. Okay, so what I've done now is I've put in 120 grams of cheese. So you saw me throwing it in and I overestimated it. So you can see me saying, okay, I need to take some of that out. So I've done that. So now what I'm going to do is it now, okay. So cover your ears because what I'm going to do now is to um, grate the cheese or bits of the cheese, okay. And what's, what's happened now 
is this screen has changed to um, three dials. It says for five seconds, it, you just turn the dial, that's, and that's why it's so easy. And it will um, basically blitz the uh, cheese for us. So look, it is. Okay, so it's now told me to transfer and set aside. And I know you can't see, but basically it's got these hands or claws that kind of come in and lock on the um, on the sides so that it's really safe for children or, or anyone else. Okay. So. Now it's telling me to put in a garlic loaf. Is that one garlic clove, Sharon? Yep. Very healthy for you, garlic. Yep. Again, it's asking me to um, insert the measuring cup with the lid. Oh, oh, that's raw garlic. I'll eat that. That'd be very good for me. Next, <laughs> again, it's telling me to turn the dial. On the screen, it's got three seconds. And again, it's going to take the blades up to seven. So it's chopping the garlic for me. Now I need a um, for this recipe because it's hot artichoke. You need artichokes. Well, I found it really hard to get artichokes. I went around the mm. big Tesco's, big Saint, and in the end, the best I got was either a jar um, from Tesco's. But it was Sainsbury's that I was able to find a tin of artichoke hearts. Mm -hmm. So it's telling me to put in one tin of about 400 grams. I'm just going to drain it first. I was going to ask if you are likely to use the liquid, the aquafaba, as it were. You can make, can't you make the um, wonderful meringues with that? How do you use that liquid? That's something to ask Google. Yeah, okay. I heard about it, but I don't know. I haven't got to that point yet. Oh, that's interesting, Flo. So you heard that you can use um, the liquid. The liquid of artichokes. Well, mainly of... Uh, Peas, uh, not green peas, but uh, yeah, what? chickpeas. Yeah, chickpeas. Yeah, it's it's a vegetarian. They, I, I think they make it into meringues. Yeah, so vegan. Vegan. Instead of, yeah. instead of egg whites. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, chickpea water. Okay. Okay. Cool. Learn something new every day. Yeah, it's so. Yeah, I, and that's on the thermomix. You can look it up, Dahlia. I didn't know about it until I heard about it on the machine. Right. Fifteen grams of olive oil. And as I, the great thing about this as well, I think which is amazing, is it doesn't matter if it's a wet or dry ingredient, it can work out what it is. And I used to find that really confusing. You know, what was it, what was the equivalent in the dry and the wet? Absolutely. That is the most difficult part of, of, of cooking, is yeah. looking out the difference in weight of the wet and dry ingredients and what, uh, yeah. Now your machine, does, does it go up in increments of five or what? Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Well, this goes up now in increments of one. Okay. But normally, when you're putting ingredients in, you kind of go, I'm sure I'm there. And then all of a sudden, you just, just do the last dollop and you're like way over. So, yeah. And the, and the reason that this is used by, um, you see it in MasterChef and, and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't show you what I had in here. Okay. okay. So, basically, that is the artichoke hearts with some olive oil. And the garlic. Yeah, so you, you basically, you've got your garlic, you've got your cheese, you've got your artichoke hearts, and then what I'm going to do is blitz it, but not very much, okay? So that's just giving it a rough chop. Okay. And then what we're 
we're going to do is we're going to cook it for three minutes at 120 grams. And that's why this can make um, soups and, and not, not just soups, as you heard from Dahlia, also um, it can do soups, it can do chopped salads, it can do, it can do loads of things. But basically this can cook as an all-in-one and, and also it makes cakes. I just find it amazing that my kitchen is just so tidy. Or have you made the porridge in the morning? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm going to send you that recipe. What you do, I mean, you could do it, you can do it on the hob. But basically, um, what you do is you get a bit of fruit. Um, I prefer to go um, pear, you know, to try and be a bit more alkaline. So what you do is you blitz the, um, uh, blitz the fruit, the apple or the pear or whatever, throw in your um, uh, oats, throw in the, the um, liquid and then just leave it. And I mean, I, I don't know if you know, but the World Porridge um, Championships, if you win it, you get a wooden spoon because if you want to make good porridge, you've got to stir it. You can stir it. And that's um, what's lovely is that you set this and you run off and you come down with porridge that's as good as Marks and Spencer's, if not better, because I mean, it's a fantastic thing to eat because you've got the sweetness of the um, of the fruit and it's a natural. Do you find, I find that if I have, um, you know, granulated sugar, I find, I just, it does, I just don't like it. I, mm. I love, you know, natural sugars and stuff. Um, uh, the best dish I ever make in a, in a Thermomix is uh, risotto because mm. oh, yeah. it's, it's, um, mixing it constantly and so you don't the have stirring to, the stirring you don't have to be stirring because the machine is stirring it for you all the that's time right. and that's that's why they say it's like a spare pair of hands it's like having a chef in the in the uh yes in the kitchen okay so that's now so, so they've cooked for for how long at 120 degrees three minutes at 120 degrees yeah so basically you're um you're sauteing them so you're sauteing them for about three minutes so you can do that on your hob you could put it in your food processor, just blitz it, um, break it down, and then just saute it. Uh, and then what's going to happen is we're going to combine all the ingredients, and then we're going to pop it in the oven to, um, and it's, it's really lovely. So if you had a party, it'd be really lovely. Prepare it ahead. I mean, we can have pretend parties. I think we should have a girls' champagne night or something in the run-up to Christmas. I think that would be a great idea. And I think then you could show all the girls how you play by Little Rudolph. So that would be good fun. Yes. So now so, what do we do? Oh, I missed this one. It's okay. okay. Now we were meant to be doing this together in my kitchen so that I could also snack while we're making. <laughs> Best late plans, eh? But it's yep. lovely just to get together, isn't it? Just, yep. uh, you know. Absolutely. Sometimes people can't travel. Yes. Okay, so what, what's happening now? There's steam coming off the top. Are we still cooking? It's the three yeah, we're still cooking, right? Okay. So the steam is wafting away. And sometimes in some recipes, you could be cooking a soup here and steaming your vegetables on top. And that's mm. that's when it's quite handy as well. I've seen some Polish ones, and it goes, makes that sound to tell you it's done, and it opens up, okay? Right, okay. Oh, that smells good and garlicky. That's a strong garlic, okay? Mm. So, Yum. so also it hasn't burnt the bottom because it's constantly stirring. Mm. Now it's telling me that I need to put in sixty grams of sour cream. Okay. That good. So Sharon, when you go to the next step, your your machine automatically goes to the way symbol. Because in my old ancient machine, I have to press the way button every time I'm going to weigh something. It it should. It doesn't always because it's so sensitive. Sometimes, like I've just clicked the next one, it's gone to minus one. So there obviously must be something on it that is um, touching it or whatever. So if I press tear the bottom. That's it. Now it's at um, at zero. So I mean, it should, but sometimes things around it because it's such a um, well, not delicate, but it just picks up everything, um, and it's just a very accurate machine. 
Um, mm. And it's a machine that that you should hammer it. I mean, I'm sure you do, but you, I mean, I use mine at least twice a day. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's something you should be, if you have this in your kitchen, it should be morning, noon and night because it will, I mean, I come down in the morning, I boil my eggs in it now. Um, as I said, I'll do a porridge. Um, you know, if we had um, last night, I was using it. Um, we had some apple sauce, and then um, I, while I had apple sauce, I was also using it for. Um, what was I using it for? I can't remember. I was. I mean, I, you just have to. Con you, I think it's a machine that that you really should be making it work really hard, and it's built for that. I mean, as Dahlia tells you. Her machine has been going a long, long time. Yeah. Now, this recipe says cream cheese, but I went in and I looked at the cream cheese and I thought this is a healthier option. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it says quark, but back to front. I think back to front. Oh, it is back to front. Okay. All right. So I, I substituted quark, or I am substituting quark for this recipe. Um, and I think quark is supposed to be healthier, isn't it? Yeah. It's ricotta. Yeah. Sorry, Flo? It's similar to ricotta, a little bit uh -huh. similar to. Yeah, yeah. It's do you use uh, it much, Flo? What do you use it for? I sometimes eat it raw with Greek olives. Mm. But uh, Sharon, I wanted to say I like your kind of marketing ploy. Your red outfit is very suitable for Christmas, but also Halloween. How clever is that? <laughs> no, is really, I meant for Valentine's. For Valentine's. <laughs> Only the garlic is for Halloween. Well, the thing is, is, is I mean, I'm, you know, it's just a little old me. And, you know, during this lockdown, I did have a job and it went. And, oh. um, and I just kind of thought, you know, I really, really like this machine. And I can really honestly tell people, you know, I think it's a brilliant machine and, it, and it's a great thing to do. And one of the things I've been doing during lockdown just, I'll just get this cooking while we're talking. So, so what are you putting in there, Sharon? I'm just, oh, let me just put that in because that could be cooking while we're talking. So that's all the stuff all put in. So there was sour cream. Oh, is that the cheese that you put in there? Huh? Yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of salt and pepper. Oh, there's two mouths of salt. Insert the lid, and now this is going to mix it all. So, so it's it's for ten seconds. It's just going to mix everything. That wasn't very good. I want a new machine for Christmas. <laughs> My, my machine seems ancient now. Okay. Oh, yum. Yum. That looks amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> Too bad we're not in your house and we're going to be using it all together. After lockdown, we'll definitely have to do some some of these, but in person. Do you know what we'll have to do, Danya? We'll have to get um, a, um, a big tent and we'll all have to be extremes of the tent. And then what I can do is run into the middle and put the food and then run back and we could all, you know, run in and out. <laughs> and then we'd all be safely socially distancing. Ooh. You can see you there, that's cool. I bet it tastes when it's ready, and now it smells better than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Flo. I in, in the Italians call it the bin bee. So with your Italian relatives, they might call it, you might hear them talking about the bin bee. Yeah, bin bee is a kind of like an older version, but, you know, I don't no, even I have one. It's, I should buy one. It. It's the same company. It's just the brand's name is called Bimbi. So you you can get this. This is um you know I know, but sometimes I just don't feel like filling the kitchen up with gadgets. I don't have that big a kitchen. 
and with the no. coffee maker and all that if you don't have a big kitchen then this is the perfect machine because exactly it does so it uh, it chops it weighs it cooks it does everything and then you can get rid of all the other and it even it's like a dough mixer as well for for breads yeah. and things like that so and cakes and stuff like that so um you have all your different um appliances in, in one the only thing i would say that it doesn't place for me is the handheld beta like if i'm making a cake or but but i don't know maybe this new one you can beat eggs in it. i don't Karen, can you beat eggs in the thermomix yes of course you can i just have to show you <laughs> so there you go so i do use the handheld beta but you'll have to show me how to um, beat eggs in the thermomix cool all right it's got a cleaning function. So while that's just, um, so we've got our hot artichoke in there. It's um, gonna basically, um, I might actually speed this up, but basically it's got a, a clean function. So I'll get- Do you put hot water in yeah, for the clean, yeah. cleaning function? Or does, do you put hot water in for the cleaning function or does it heat it up itself? I just, I just threw a drop of, um, a drop, I just put normal water. I was rinsing it and I just want to kind of, agitate off all the bits, et cetera. I, you know, I could do it in the dishwasher, you take it all to pieces, but for this, I'm just gonna get it to do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Like in between dishes, um, yeah, I just put hot water in and then I do the thing and it cleans itself. And then when I'm finished for the for the day, then, then everything comes apart and I put it in the dishwasher. So how long is it in the oven for, um, Sharon? Um, it says 15 minutes. So in that time, we're going to make the mocktails uh, and then we'll be done. Is that good? Fabulous. Yay! Okay, right, okay. So um, I'm going to do a recipe called the um, Rudolph mocktail. And um, it's a really, it's, it's called a mocktail because it means that it, you can make it without alcohol. And you could do it with your children or your grandchildren, etc. So let me just show you what he's going to look like. Him. And then, of course, for those alcoholics among us, we can add um, alcohol in. Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. So this is what we're going to do next. Yeah. And in it, you can see, like, it's easy. It's eight portions. It takes five minutes or whatever. And then along here... You've got uh, your ingredients. You probably can't see it. It's back to front, so I need to fix that on my no, Zoom. No, we can see it. You see okay. it back to front. We and there's my instructions and any hits, hints and tips. So this is, um, and then you can see other suggestions at the bottom. Okay, so that that's kind of what the cookie do has, and that's what would be on here as well. So um, what I need to do is I need to get cranberries, sugar, and water, um, and I made it earlier, and I'll go and get that while it's doing this. Yes, um, if anybody does eventually get a Thermomix and uh, I have, because I got mine, I bought mine while I was in Ukraine. So with it came a recipe for the most amazing chocolate liqueur made with vodka. So if anybody buys it in the future and wants my amazing vodka chocolate liqueur recipe for the Thermomix, uh, I'll, I'll let you have it. It's amazing. Thanks, Dahlia. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Uh, sorry, sorry, Letty, can you say again? How much is the machine? Um, I'm not sure how much the current one is. We'll have to ask Sharon. Um, it's it, it's quite uh, it's 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 quite pricey, um, but as I've said, mine works the same as it did when I first got it eleven years. Um, so in my experience, all the people that think it's too expensive haven't got one. But all the people that buy one see the value of it because they use it so often and it replaces other machines and it lasts for so long, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think when I bought it, it was about, 
probably about uh, was I don't know it was probably about three hundred pounds. Two no, hundred. No, no, you're talking about a thousand. All oh, right. It, it was I think when I bought it, it was around a thousand, one thousand, two hundred pounds or something like that. I'm not I'm not sure what. You no. Know, or was it euros? I don't know. I was living in, in Ukraine, so I don't remember the, the exact price and how it uh, how it translated to euros or pounds. Um, Sharon, uh, is your how much longer does the the the, the cleaning take? Should be uh, just popping out now. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you heard Sharon, but the the ladies were asking like, what is the price of the of the current machine? And I can't even remember how much mine costs. Sure. Um, price of the machine is one one four nine, and it uh, they normally most people do it on the finance package, which is the spread payment, which kind of works out about thirty pounds a, a, a day. Sorry, not a day, a month, a, a month, a month. Thirty pounds a month. Uh, and when I first heard about it, I was like, how on earth can you justify that? But I can only say that I use it so much. And, yeah. you know, I know people have got machines 24 years and I use it more than my car. That's, mm. no, that's exactly what I was saying was that mm. uh, once you have it and you realize the, the value that it gives you and how much you use it. And if anybody's interested, I'll be interested to sell mine for a much reduced price so that I can buy a new one. <laughs> So if you if you if you would like to uh, if you would like to, to like put your toe in and try a thermomix and get the che a cheaper version older version then you're welcome to discuss with me a yeah. after all say, that is so wise Dahlia that is so honestly you will I mean, I'm quite interested in getting the new one I know I think that what you find is that it's funny one of the comments of people when they've got it they just kind of and and it it just it just opens up things that you never thought you could cook because i'm not a good cook but i just i can't tell you how you lose your mind saying gosh i could cook this and i could yes. cook that and it's it saves you money yes. and time and all yes. sorts of things because you're looking at your food and you're going into cookie do and you're saying oh actually i could reuse I could I could use that 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 fruit is not is going to turn. I'm going to make it into a jam or a chutney or whatever, and it would just suddenly enable you to do things. And when you're cooking all the things from scratch, you're controlling your sugar, you're controlling your salt, you're picking exactly the ingredients you want to go into your body. And I I for example I thought I, I was I just have been really walking around going you're bonkers Sharon because I've been buying jars of um, tomato sauce and then and and quite expensive tomato sauce and i grew tomatoes and i i thought oh, i'll just try making some tomato sauce in this and it was just so lovely i you know my tomatoes are over but i'm like thinking i'm going to keep buying tomatoes and making my own tomato sauce rather than buying it from the shop but i know that um i know one of the sales directors from thermomix and she was saying that um during the spanish um you know their last um uh, financial crash that they had in the, uh, the 80s they had a Spanish retired couple who bought one and they sent in a letter that eight months later they believed that they showed how they'd saved money by cooking themselves and they'd paid for the machine in eight months and I cannot tell you how much this machine will pay for itself mm. lecture over no no absolutely and as I was saying about uh when I have leftover egg yolks, I make ice cream for the kids. And I much prefer, you know, knowing exactly what ingredients are going into my kids instead of the store bought ice cream with preservatives and extra sugar and things like that. And I put only organic ingredients in. And my kids prefer my ice cream to, to others. And especially if you've got like any um, nutritional needs, like uh, if you gluten free or something like that, you know, a machine like this, you you can you can make almond flour yourself out of almonds by chopping them up, etc, mm. etc. Et mm. So mm. it's really good, especially if you've got complicated nutritional needs. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's so precise, isn't it? And it, it, it's a very idiot proof machine, because 
you can either follow the instructions exactly as it guides you through and it's just feed the machine turn the dial that's it mm -hmm. or you can make your own recipes up and, and change it to whatever you want as well so it, it's it's just it, it just enable and, and it can do things that if you were doing it on the hob would either be dangerous or um time consuming like like we're saying risotto sugar's quite dangerous to work with because you've got to really watch it and i was making creme caramels with this and i cannot tell you my caramel was mwah, just amazing yeah. And also it does bread, it does ice cream, it does, it just does a huge amount of things. And when you've got a rest, when you've got cookie dough, which is all of Thermomix around the world sharing all their recipes, you're finding out how Polish people make bread, there's an Italian section, la 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 la, and it, it's just amazing, you just kind of think, I mean, I was trying to make, and you think I'm bonkers now. I decided in the last lockdown to make dandelion honey because I heard a Polish going. So I was going around graveyards <laughs> pulling um, pulling up dandelions because this is a really good place for buying. If you're getting dandelions. In your red outfit. <laughs> you're going around graveyards in your red outfit. <laughs> I'm a graveyard. <laughs> And then, and it was a Polish recipe, and I was having to translate it um, uh, because it was obviously something that a lot of Polish did. But it was just amazing. I just never thought because dandelions are really, really nutritious for us because they're really big tapworms, up like tap tap roots, don't they? And they're really good for you. And we, and it's it's something that they they call it the poor man's salad. And I've never heard of that. And that to me was like, wow, that's amazing. And yeah, I put in 250 grams of um, frozen cranberries because I cannot get cranberries at the moment. And I got them in Sainsbury's. I tried to get fresh cranberries, couldn't get them. So I got uh, frozen. Seems Sainsbury's are really, really good for specialist stuff. Now I'm going to put in 80 grams of sugar and the water as well. And then I'm just going to cook it. So an interesting fact about um, frozen fruit. This is one of the instances where frozen fruit actually has more nutrition than fresh fruit. Mm. The reason for that is fruit is picked fresh and then frozen on site, flash frozen on site, which locks in all the, nu the nutrients. Um, whereas when you're eating fresh fruit, the fruit is picked, it's then like put in boxes, etc., and then it's like shipped out. But by the time you're getting um, your, your fruit, in your supermarket you are talking five days to two weeks after they were picked so um when you, so that's why uh frozen fruit is actually more nutrition nutritious than fresh so sharon absolutely nothing wrong with um using okay. so what it's doing now is it's um it's set itself for 10 minutes it's going to bring the um, temperature up to 100 degrees. It's basically going to boil the uh, cranberries and it's it's spinning them around at the same time. I put this on so that if it gets hot and it spits, um, I mean, it's basically, it's, this recipe is like making um, cranberry sauce, um, but actually taking it and making it into a drink. And I think cranberry is supposed to be really good for you i would have thought it would be really good covid cooking because it's really high in vitamin c isn't it absolutely is that yes Talia? yes <laughs> yes okay right so well, that's high good. in uh in, in lots of vitamins and minerals the higher colored your fruit is your fruit and vegetables the okay. higher concentration of good stuff for you okay so that's cooking i'm going to show you how to make my Little yeah. Rudolphs. Here's my little friends. I've got a little piggy one, <laughs> and then I've got a little one. Uh, that's such with a little bit of um, apricot. And I'm going to also show you one that's in the picture that's like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what have you got in Rudolph? And this is this is great because um, you know with this you can give it to the children, um, and they can be involved as well. So basically, you take a um, big marshmallow, which I got in uh, Marks, and you can get it in. Um, you can get it. I did see them in Tesco's as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is make the ice. Mm -hmm. So this is a clove. Mm -hmm. Clove. Mm -hmm. 
So you go, so two little eyes. It was in the garden and I got a sprig of fresh rosemary. Romantic now, rosemary. Oh, golly, the hot egg um, artichoke is... I'm going to give it another five minutes. So here's my lovely little um, sprigs. And what I'm going to do is... Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, there we go. I'm going to take the um, ends off a little bit. So I've got a little bit there. There. And now, little Rudolph, I'm going to put this in your, in here. Oh, this smells great. Yeah. There's little Rudolph. And then you get a cocktail stick. Oh, come on, cocktail stick. Oh, come out. And I'm going to snap it. Okay. Now, I. I'm going to do one with a um, uh, a defrosted cranberry, mm. um, which is lovely for the nose. But I also did that other one with a piece of dried apricot, which worked absolutely fabulous. And I've found the best way to do it is to take the sharp bit of this and put it in. That's it. That's good. You see that? Mm. You no. could use you could use the black currant, no black currant, a little fruit. That's a good idea, Dot. I really like that flow. Okay, and now I'm just going to push it in. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to start singing some Christmas songs. <laughs> I want to start singing water, water in the winter wonderland. Do you think we'll get snow this Christmas? I hope so. No. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a skewer stick, and then I'm just basically going to, ooh, there you have my little Rudolph. Oh, okay, so that's Rudolph. And um, basically I'm gonna put him in my glass jar. <coughs> I'm just gonna snap that off. So Sharon, um, in the Thermomix, you've put um, the sugar and the, um, the cranberries. cranberries and the water and stuff. Do, is that cooking? Does that heat up? And then do you have to cool it down in order to drink? Or is it a hot cocktail? Okay. It's actually a cold cocktail. Okay. What it's doing at the moment is it is boiling those cranberries and, um, uh, you know, basically popping them and, and getting the nutrition out. In this recipe, what we're also going to do is, um, we're going to have to speed it up a bit, but basically what I'm going to do is put some crushed ice in, or, or put ice in and crush it, put the uh, mixture in with it, um, and, um, and then serve it with something a bit sparkly, etc. cetera. Um, so it's actually a cold drink, um, and then like you can you're just... Cooking it, you're cooking it to begin with. So could you cook it like an amount of time before, a couple of hours before, and then just let it cool down naturally and then add some crushed ice when you serve it. Yeah, if you wanted to. I mean, you can see it bubbling away now, can't you? So you can see, can you see it coming against here? Yes. You see, hold on, if I move away, you might see, yeah, I can see some steam coming. You might not see it as clearly as me. No, we can, we can see it. And, okay, and, cool. and then also, like, if you were to add alcohol to it, to make it an alcoholic, two questions. What alcohol would go best with this one? And second, do you add it in what, when it's cold? Do you add the alcohol in? Right, there's only one answer to that, Dahlia. And any alcohol is good alcohol. <laughs> 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 I personally, I think that, that cranberries are quite a strong tart drink. And I think one of the things about Christmas is you want to kind of have something quite warming, don't you? And I, I would be... Um, thinking about something, you know, like a, a schnapps or um, brandy, I think would be, um, I think a warming drink would be a great thing to have with it. But I think you could also um, have it with Prosecco or, um, 
Uh, I mean, I think you'd have to taste it. it. It'll be, it should be quite a sharp thing. So it would be great with Prosecco because it would cut Prosecco. Because um, sometimes I don't, I'm not a lover of Prosecco, but um, it would kind of cut that sugariness, um, uh, you know, if you needed to. So uh, that's now bubbling off. And then, and, and so second question would be, would you add the alcohol once it's cooled down? I would, yeah, because otherwise it'll just go off. And you you want it, I think, more at the end because you want to, to taste the flavour and then judge how much you want to put in. Um, so I think it's it like a mixer. I just find if I put it into a Christmas pudding or something. Okay. Quite handy. Right, okay, so. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, glad I did wow. that. Right, okay. Here is. Nice. Oh, yeah, I have to be very careful because I can see it every time I tip it, it kind of spills a bit. But basically, I have um, what I would serve that with. And they're really easy to make and they're much, so much more flavoursome yourself. Is make your own cheese straws. They are just. You know, with cheese straws, you can you can put on the top, you can put seeds. Um, I mean, they're basically like a, a cheese uh, puff pastry. Um, but if you're using your own cheese, it's always going to be so much better quality than the stuff you buy. And if you can make them fresh, I mean, when I made it the last time, because I was going to make it, I just ran out of time. But um, if you have um, cheese straws with that, really lovely. I mean, there's cheese in it already, but you'd need to leave, uh, you'd leave it to cool a little bit because that's absolutely roasted. Gonna have a look at this and just see how it's doing. Okay, it's good. Mm. Okay. So right that, again. Yeah, speaking again. with the right theme. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Can you see that clearly? Looks mm. like it smells delicious. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fine. Right. So I'm just going to um, put that aside. Dalia, I want to ask um, does the machine come with only one type of casserole or jug or whatever? It yes. It comes, it comes with one jug. Um, most of the dishes that you make with it are like a one pot dish. Um, you know, uh, and then as you saw, Sharon did in between the two dishes that she made today. You, you just can put some, the new one, you just put water in and then you run the cleaning cycle and it cleans it quickly in five minutes while you're cleaning up the rest of the kitchen. And then it's ready to go for the, for the next one. My older machine, I put hot water in and then I, I put it on the, the highest, uh, the hottest and the highest revolution. And that also like cleans out any bits like around the blade. And then when you finish cooking for the day and you've, you've finished all your cooking, wow. I'm sorry. It's it's lovely. It's it's it's. I love cranberry. I like it. I also normally cut in half the amount of sugar. Mm -hmm. I was cutting half the amount of sugar, whether it's cakes or anything, because I always find the recipes are way too sugary. Yeah, yeah. You can always add it. You can't take it out. Yeah. And so then, at the end of the day, um, Letty, when you finished cooking, then you um, then you you actually put it apart, and the blade comes out of the pot. And it all goes into the dishwasher. The whole jug, everything goes into the dishwasher. But so easy to clean in between dishes. Uh, uh, five minutes, it's it's clean um, and it cleans properly. So, um, which is great. So, what have you got there? Ask. So, have you taken out the liquid, Sharon? Sorry. Have you taken out the liquid? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Set to the side. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to uh, mix through it, but it'll be absolutely fine. I mean, the ice cubes will cool it down as well. Okay, so it's asking me to put in 300 grams of ice cubes. And we, Dahlia, do you use some, do you make um, uh, fruit sorbets with this? No, I, I, I don't. I've never tried. Okay, well... That's one of the things that if you were to do it just, you know, without this, it would take forever. But this can crush ice. Um, yes. And um, an absolutely, you have to taste it. But imagine if you took, uh, we were talking about frozen, but what you can do with this, for example, my favourite um, 
uh, recipe is uh, the fruit foam or sorbet. And basically, you take frozen fruits like strawberries or whatever, you throw it into here, and it, it's so powerful, it just makes it into you know, a light paste, and then you, you mix it with the whisk and you, you put air into it. And it's, it's just pure fruits that you're eating. So when you think about all the other um, ice creams and stuff that you might have, it's a lovely thing. The other thing you could do is you could make a gin sorbet. I love gin. <laughs> so, okay, I put in, I've left in, um, I haven't cleaned it because it's gonna be all lovely. And uh, also this cooked and it hasn't burnt the bottom or whatever. So just that's why I kind of stopped it a little bit early. So. Um, so that's ice cubes. I'm just gonna chop it up. Chop them up. Yeah, here we go. So he's gonna turn them into. Um, oh, just gonna turn them into uh, blitzed ice cubes. Yes. So I've done it for half the amount of time. And the oh, next one, I'll just do a couple of minutes. Keep going. Sharon. So I rushed that and I opened it and I found that the ice cubes weren't properly. Um... Okay. So here's the ice cubes. And then, did you say something, Dolly? Because I missed that. Oh, no, I was just going to say that the next time, you know, when there's not lockdown and we can have up to six people in a room, we should definitely have a um, a, a cooking group with a thermomix at my house. So um, we can use both machines and do like s same recipes or complementary recipes and we can see how it works. And then people that want to come and join us, they can actually play with the machine and see how fun it is to cook with it. We want to see a competition between you, your machine, and Sharon and hers. Absolutely, we can do that. Well, I can tell you, mine will win hands down. <laughs> I, know. I have no doubt that yours will win, but mine's a trusty machine. <laughs> okay. Now, what I've done is I've put this basket into here, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm scraping uh, the... Um, uh, you know with um cranberries you can get a lot of bits and um so you're basically like straining it into the ice yeah because otherwise you get bits in your drink and it's just not you're just kind of picking it out of the teeth so just strain your cranberries and i've done it by putting it into this so i'm putting the i'm putting the um syrup back into the ice cubes okay <coughs> Okay. Hmm. So it's all in there. Yum. And so what we're gonna do is just gonna mix it all together very briefly. So Sharon. <laughs> right okay and then this is where um if you've got children um so that's so healthy for you now what Sharon, you is, that, uh, is that like a, a syrup so you would then add that to you'd add that to something else you know wouldn't just drink it like that well, what I'm going to do, this recipe suggests that you put in ginger ale. Sometimes children prefer um, lemonade. I mean, you just basically put in a mixer um, with it because otherwise it's just cooked uh, cranberries. OK, so I did ginger ale, which I quite like. I don't think ginger ale by itself is is so great. But um, when I did it with the ginger ale, because I think the sweetness in it, and the bubbliness, it, it's, it really works well together. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do it just in the glass. And the reason for that is, is, is that 
um, just if anyone else in my family comes along. So I want some and I can leave it in the fridge and then, you know, change it to whatever I want. So here's, here's some, there's some ginger ale. Here's some, Oh, that looks amazing. So there we go. Yay. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that a lovely thing to do for Christmas? Yeah. And then, you know, put in your alcohol. And that's so good for you as well. Mm. That's very, very good. Jealous that I can't taste it too. Mm. We'll, we'll wait for this. George Clooney to serve our drink. Sharon is enjoying her. <laughs> we'll wait for George Clooney. He's with a cafe, nice cafe, but he can serve us these. Yes, exactly. Yes. We we need a little eye candy when we're having our lovely um, non-alcoholic drinks. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, Sharon. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, how long is your video that you've got of um, of, of you making the the truffles? Ah, these. Okay, here's yeah. some chocolate truffles. Because we also, um, I mean, otherwise it would take take quite a while. I've made it a movie, and it's about about five minutes of how to make chocolate truffles. So, so uh, ladies, would you like me to play that video of um, that Sharon's uh, pre prepared? Because it takes like you've got to cook it for ten minutes or five minutes or whatever. What she's done is she's pre prepared a video of her making the the chocolate truffles. If you would like, I can play it now, or I can uh, put the video on in our group. What What do you ladies think? Are you Would you like to see another five minutes of um, of chocolate truffle making, or I'll add it on to uh, the group? I think, in fairness, because the other ladies are not here, maybe we should post it there for everyone then to see everything together. Okay. That's just my opinion. No, so no, that's absolutely fun. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I will. Um, and Anita says she wants to walk her dog. So, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, that's absolutely perfect. And so what I'll do is um, I will. Um, I will post that onto our Facebook group and I'll put this on YouTube and I, I'll put that the, the, the truffle one on YouTube as well. And I will also share, Sharon also made a shorter version of her, how to make the, the dip. Am I right, Sharon? Yeah. yeah. And so, I've done the cocktails as well. So it's all, you can watch it as okay. movies as oh, well. Yes. I will post those uh, separately on Facebook as well. Um, so for our group that you can, you can either watch this presentation or you can watch the shorter presentations of Sharon making those things. Um, if you want to then, uh, you know, try any of those recipes. Um, I mean, all of them can be adapted to doing on the hob. It obviously takes much longer because you've got cooking and stirring and, and chopping in a separate machine. Um, but they all can be adapted to making. So um, definitely uh, Sharon will send me like recipe cards and then I will I can also share that with the group as well. Um, mm. and if, if the group wants to say, can you can we close to Christmas do something else as well? That will be fabulous. Yes, yes, no, absolutely. And um, yeah, so what I'll do is I will stop the presentation now. If anybody uh, that's watching this recording uh, is interested in finding out more about the machine, you can uh, contact me and I'll put you in touch with Sharon. Um, or you can contact, uh, get, get Sharon's details from me. And, um, and yeah, and then we'll, I would love to do some more cooking groups when we can get together to actually play with the machine because that's super fun. And Letty, when, when you were here and we were cooking together, it's, it's more fun when you're actually cooking together than just watching a demonstration over Zoom. So I, I would definitely like to do a regular thing with Sharon as part of our cooking group um, so we can have lots of fun uh, playing with the machine. Yeah, and just cooking together and talking food is great. The last question I have, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, um, I just wonder, the machine is it's German, 